everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to Bookish Blonde. Today we're going to talk about five books on my shelves that are intimidating to me for one reason or another. I'm hoping by talking about these books here and making this video that my viewers will convince me, encourage me to pick up one of these, um, you know, just from your comments down below. I am almost done with the school year, so I have um, the summer off, so I'm hoping to tackle one or two of these as just seeing that I'll have more time. Um, but okay, let's just get started. So the first one intimidates me because I have heard it is one of the saddest books ever written. Um, it's very popular on Book Talk, or it was recently. I have had this book for years before that. Um, it's over 800 pages. It's supposed to be amazing, but heartbreaking, and I've tried picking it up one or two other times, and it wasn't that I was into the story, but I just couldn't follow through because I wasn't in a place where I felt like putting myself through emotional trauma of reading this book. <laughs> and that is A Little Life by Hannah Yanagihara. Um, so if you've read this and it's worth it, please comment down below. This one, we're following four college classmates in New York. Um, their relationships are tinged by addiction, success, and pride. And as I think it covers like decades of their lives, um, and the men are held together by their devotion to a man named Jude. And Jude has been scarred with severe emotional childhood trauma. Um, it does say this is a hymn to brotherly bonds and a masterful depiction of love in the 21st century. This novel is about the families we are born into and the families that we make for ourselves. So I think I'm going to love this. I just need to get past it and just be sad and read it. Um, so please put your thoughts about this one if you've read it down below. Really appreciate it. Um, next one is intimidating because it's gigantic. Um, it's a Stephen King book. I know most of his books are large. Um, I've read a couple. I've read Pet Cemetery. I've read Misery and... Oh, what's the one he came out with recently? It's like a fairy tale. I'll pop it up. I can't remember the name of it. And out of those three, I loved all three. So I don't know exactly why I pick, don't pick up more Stephen King. I feel like when I was younger and tried to read him, I was just turned off by the amount of words he uses. I feel like sometimes he does more than necessary, but I know people love that about him. So it's just a me thing. Um, but that one is 11 63 This one intrigues me because it's got the historical uh, fiction aspect in it. Um, and I think there's some time travel, which I love books with time travel if it, they're done well. So, I don't, again, I don't know. Maybe I will pick this up this summer. Um, but yeah, we are have someone that can go back and sign it, go back in time and try to save or pre prevent the Kennedy assassination. So that's 11 The next one, I am intimidated because I'm worried that I'm not going to be smart enough to follow this book. I've heard it's hard to follow, and that is The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. Stuart Turton, I think, has two other books right now out that sound really intriguing to me, but I've told myself I need to read this one first. It's been on my TBR for I don't know, six, seven years. <laughs> um, but this one is a closed door mystery, I believe. And Evelyn Hardcastle is murdered and someone named Aiden um, wakes up each day in a different body of one of the people at this hotel. Um, and he's trying to solve the mystery. So I'm just worried I'm not gonna be able to keep up with this one. Um, that's why that one's intimidating. Sounds good though. Okay, okay, the next one intimidates me because of the topic of the book, and that is Still Alice by Lisa Genova. This one has the main theme of someone who is starting to have early onset Alzheimer's disease, and that scares me. I feel like losing, losing your mind and losing control of your thoughts and memories, that scares me more than a lot of things. <laughs> Um, so I'm worried about this one because I'm feeling, I'm worried it's going to just be too hard for me to read because of that fear of that. Um, but we are following 
um, Alice, who is 50 years old. She's a cognitive psychology professor at Harvard. Um, she's also a world-renowned expert in linguistics. Um, she's got grown children and a husband. Um, and so she starts just becoming disoriented and forgetful. Um, and yeah, the tragic diagnosis changes her life um, and her relationship with her family. And that scares me. So that's why that one's intimidating. But I've heard great things. If you've read this, let me know. Should I read it? Or is it too hard to read? <laughs> okay, next one that intimidates me. Again, it's a fantasy book. It's another large book. You're kind of seeing a theme here. Uh, for whatever reason, over 500 pages seems to intimidate me. I don't know why. Um, but this next one is also the beginning of a fantasy series, which intimidates me because fantasy, fantasy series... Every single book is going to be very long and they can go on forever sometimes or they're very long series usually and so um, that's why this one intimidates me and that is Sarah J. Mass, um, House of Earth and Blood. This is the first one in the Crescent City um, series. I've talked about this before on my channel so I won't go into too much detail but again it's just it's so long. <laughs> it's so long. Um, Eight, another 800 page book. So I have three books around 800 pages here um, that intimidate me. Um, the other two for different reasons, but there you have it. Those are the five um, books that I'm intimidated to read. Which one should I pick up this summer? Leave your comments down below. I would love to hear from you. Um, can't pick them all up because they're so big. We have that one. And last but not least, A Little Life. So thank you for watching and leave comments down below help talk me into one of these and i will see you guys in my next video happy reading bye